And a very good morning once again, behind-the-scenes interview time here on Worcester Radio with Rory Lewandowski talking agriculture from the OSU Extension Office here in Wayne County. And our topic today with Rory is manure spill prevention. Manure spills, of course, come in all shapes and sizes, ranging from minor to catastrophic. When any manure spill occurs, Rory, there's concern about potential environmental damage. Obviously, the bigger the spill, the bigger the concern. Uh, on top of that, you have financial cost, human injuries, just to name a few. Farms also handle livestock manure in different forms, usually as a solid or maybe as a liquid. From a manure spill perspective, is there more or less risk with one form of manure compared to another? Sure. Well, as you mentioned, uh, one of the concerns uh, with a manure spill is environmental damage. And in particular, the concern is when manure enters water, especially when that's a uh, you know, public source such as a stream, river, lake, or even a ditch or waterway that leads to one of those sources. So therefore, uh, if we think about it in that way, there's definitely greater potential for liquid manure as compared to solid manure to move across surfaces or to infiltrate down through the soil and enter tile drainage. Uh, that can, again, result in water pollution. So other aspects of manure spill management, such as containment of the spill and cleanup of the spill, are going to be easier with solid manure as compared to liquid manure. Obviously, Rory, in order to talk about prevention, we need to understand some of the basic causes of your typical manure spill. Are there some common elements involved when talking about manure spills? And if so, Talk about some of the common causes in, in why the manure spills happen in the first place. Sure. Well, we can uh, group reasons that manure spills happen into several general categories. Kevin Erb from the University of Wisconsin Extension uh, in a webinar on the topic of manure spills said that generally manure spills happen for one or more reasons. Uh, one is mechanical failure of equipment uh, used in the handling application of manure. Uh, often these cases are really, those are the true accidents. They're, they're just due to unforeseen situations and circumstances. Another reason is improper application of manure or improper storage management. And that includes things like maybe applying too high a rate of manure. That could be due to applicator error, uh, soil conditions not conducive to that rate that's being applied. Uh, usually it, that happens when the soil is too wet. Uh, or possibly not being aware of the weather forecast uh, for rain coming in and then you get uh, manure moving as a result of that. Improper storage management uh, includes not monitoring storage closely enough. That could result in an overflow situation. And then finally, manure spills can occur just due to negligence. Now negligence can be defined as failure to exercise reasonable care or maybe even knowingly increasing the risk of a manure spill happening. Uh, hopefully, you know, we, negligence isn't a, a big factor, but sometimes that happens. Now, this could be something uh, when we talk about negligence, like simply failure to maintain your equipment in good working order, or maybe performing tasks when you're under serious sleep deprivation, or ignoring a manure plan or a weather forecast. Rory, you've explained some of the reasons why a manure spill occurs, but can you also talk a little bit about where manure spills occur most commonly. You've mentioned storage equipment, you mentioned field application. You know, there's a process to getting manure from storage to land application. Is there somewhere in that process maybe where spills generally are more likely to occur? Yeah, that's a, that's a good question. So at the 2018 Manure Science Review event that took place in Hardin County in late July, Glenn Arnold, OSU Extension Field Specialist in Manure Nutrient Management Systems, gave a presentation in which he listed three different places where manure spills are most likely to occur. Now, one area is on the farmstead itself, you know, close to the farm buildings and the facilities where that storage is typically located. And most of those manure incidents are actually manure escapes. They're the result of things like a manure pit overflows, a manure pond overflows, or, or you get a runoff from a lot. A uh, second place that manure spills happen is during the transport of manure. Now, as farms and applicators strive to do a better job of matching up your manure nutrients with the fields that need those nutrients, we see that manure is obviously getting transported farther distances, longer distances. So uh, we're out on the road. Those longer transport distances and time on the road increases the risk of an accident and a manure spill. 
During transport, manure spills are the result of things like, you know, a flip manure tanker or a semi-truck tanker. Uh, maybe you get a manure hose leak, uh, improperly secured load, uh, gate comes open, a uh, number of different things. And then the third area where manure spills or escape happens is actually on the field itself. Uh, either during or shortly after the manure application, oftentimes those spills are the result of surface runoff or rapid movement of that manure through the soil profile and then into the field tile and from there out into a, a waterway. We're joined again by Rory Levandusky from the OSU Extension Office. Rory, now that we've identified and classified some of the common causes of manure spills or escapes, how do we use that information then to prevent manure spills? There are some factors the farm or manure applicant uh, can control, but as you mentioned, other factors that kind of are out of your control. How does that affect uh, a prevention plan as far as trying to put one into place? Yeah, I think we need to look at all those factors. So understanding why manure spills happen and then where they're likely to happen is important so that each farm can identify the areas of higher risk on their farm. So it's going to vary from farm to farm, but you identify those areas of risk on your farm. And then prevention is really all about reducing those areas of risk and potential liability to your farm. Identifying areas of risk include those, both those manageable factors, as you pointed out, as well as some of those factors that seem to be outside of our, our control. Uh, for example, Let's say a, a manure escape happens because the manure storage structure overflows. Now, most probably uh, that happened because weather events didn't permit the hauling and application of manure. You planned to get out, but weather didn't let you do that. Or maybe uh, in combination, we had an unexpectedly large rain event, and so that pushed your storage over the top. Weather certainly is an uncontrollable event, yet uh, from a farm perspective, we need a plan to manage this possibility. So what am I going to do if I'm, if I'm close to storage and I know that a large rain event might put this over the top? Uh, is there a neighbor with extra lagoon space or is there a lagoon, lagoon available on a former dairy facility that might be used in emergency? Uh, can we line up some emergency tankers or, or places to pump if we need to do that? So some other causes then of manure spills are really the result of equipment failures. Uh, maybe traffic accidents as well, lack of monitoring our equipment, over application of manure, uh, manure applied at the wrong time or under improper conditions or just plain operator error. Now within each of these causes that farm manager should try to identify what can be done to minimize risk and include such things as periodic and regular equipment checks, uh, regular maintenance of equipment, uh, installing emergency check uh, shutoffs and and uh, making sure that they're easy to access in the event of an emergency spill, uh, making sure that your employees and applicators all have training, making sure that work schedules provide adequate rest so nobody's hauling manure during a time when they're uh, sleep deprived, especially if they're gonna be out on the roadway. Uh, make sure you have an up-to-date management plans that will guide those application rates, uh, make sure you're monitoring the weather and do a good job of record keeping. Rory, as we wrap up today's show, are there any other key steps you can think of that farms can apply to, to try and prevent manure spills? Yeah, I think manure spill prevention really begins with the farm knowing and operating with the design parameters of their storage system. You know, know what the limits of your system are. So someone on the farm has to know the capacity of your manure storage system, uh, know your animals number, the manure production you're getting out of those animals, uh, what kind of farm wastewater is going into that capacity that storage facility, uh, what type of normal rainfall events, how does that affect the storage uh, unit, and then you know someone who's monitoring and determining when that storage facility needs to be emptied or you need to take some emergency steps to, to draw it down if you can't get out in the field. So again that means someone is monitoring the structure, they're looking ahead at the weather and the field conditions and they're trying to juggle all those various pieces. Uh, second, I heard Sean Hawkins, he's an animal waste management specialist from the University of Tennessee, say that farms should really designate someone during manure hauling and application to serve as a leak watch person. Uh, so that's going to be a person who's just going to verify the manure application plan and application rates. That person will be inspecting equipment before and after loading. Uh, he'll be checking the pipes or the drag line connections and inspecting for leaks and punctures. Finally, Farms need to provide training for both family members and employees involved in the storage, handling, transport, and application of manure. 
Spills are going to happen, and training equips people to have confidence in knowing what to do in those emergencies when time becomes so critical. Well, we've covered the first process. Next time we speak with Rory, we're going to cover emergency planning and then response with manure spills. Meanwhile, if someone wants more information before we speak again, Rory, about preventing manure spills, the information where they can find out more. Yeah, they can contact me at the Wayne County Extension Office at 330-264-8722. And also the Wayne County Soil and Water Conservation District Office is another good source of information. Contact them at 330-262-2836. Once again, you've been listening to Behind the Scenes here on Worcester Radio. I'm your host, Ron Hamilton. Our guest in studio today from the OSU Extension Office has been Rory Levandusky as we talk about manure spill prevention. Rory, as always, thanks again for coming in and sharing. My pleasure. Thanks, Ron.